Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let's welcome our new guest, uh, Zachary Reisler, uh, who is a 17-year-old founder of Softcourse, and he has an amazing journey. Um, and uh, Zachary, do you want to uh, kind of introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm, I'm Zachary. I just turned 18 a few days ago. So uh, uh, now <laughs> I'm in the international world. Um, I've been doing business and entrepreneurship since I've been 14 years old, ever since COVID started. And it's really been quite a journey. And I'm excited to hear a little bit about your story. But my story is pretty interesting. Um, just started out with e-commerce, but turned into more of the startup scene and the traveling scene. And, um, you know, it, we'll see how my future ends up. But for now, it's been very exciting to see the amount of work I've been putting in at a young age and seeing where that can get me. And you're still in the high school, right? Yeah, I'm still in high school, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you plan to go to the college or just continue with your business journey? Yeah, that's been the biggest thing. I've talked to so many adults in the business world about this and to my parents and family, and everyone has different opinions. People think to go to college, get the degree, and you know, actually make something of yourself in you know, the corporate world. I have always been against college for a little bit, um, especially in America, because Maybe where you live in Europe, college is very cheap. You can go to college for maybe a couple thousand dollars a year. The rent is cheap and the way of life is um, pretty affordable. However, university in the United States costs almost six figures to go for the entirety of your four years. So you're spending almost a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars to get a degree. So it's very expensive. Um, and the quality of the education isn't as good, I would argue as some schools in Europe, and the quality of people that you're going to be around isn't as good as some schools in Europe. So for me, it's always been, if I'm going to go the university option, I'd want it to be worth a lot of my money. So I would want to go to Europe if I was going to go to university. However, my biggest thing is, you know, focus on the business. If that's giving you the connections, if that's giving you the money, and if you're meeting the right people while also learning the right information, then really, like, what else does college have to offer? You know, that's always kind of been the, the guesswork for me. So, yeah, I guess for me, I want to stick without college. But if it's something that I find that myself needing, I'll end up going towards some European schools, maybe in Central Europe, to look at uh, universities. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's cool. And you sound very mature. It, uh, it It's obvious that you had this exposure to the business world and you have talked to a lot of people in this uh, domain. Um, yeah. How did you start? When did you start? So I started right when uh, COVID-19 was rampaging the world. Um, I'm not too sure how the schools dealt with it in your area, but in my area, schools completely shut down. We were left without teachers. We were just kind of left with a stack of work to do until the summertime hits. And from April until September, I really had nothing to do. So there were a couple options. I saw my friends kind of go down the route of scrolling on social media and playing video games. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make the most of my time. And I was kind of looking at some different ideas of maybe starting my first business at 14 years old, which I guess like it's kind of hard for the average 14 year old to like say, oh, I want to start a business during um, COVID. But for me, it's something that I want to keep myself busy with. I saw this massive space called drop shipping and I was really intrigued by it and I wanted to start my own product and maybe make a tiny brand out of it over the course of COVID. And I started my first product. It was called an infuser bottle. It's basically a water bottle that you could infuse fruit with in the bottom and you could shake it up and it would make um, these delicious like fruit flavored waters that actually tasted really good and really healthy for you. And I found that product on AliExpress and I made a brand out of it. And over the course of a few weeks when COVID was first starting, I was making a lot of social media content, making my website, and I was able to profit almost $700 one month from the business at 14 years old. That was money I've never seen before in my entire life at that point. So for me, being like getting the $700 in one month, I was like, man, maybe this is possible for me to not go down the average path and to start these businesses because I like doing this stuff. Like I really liked promoting this product and I really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So for me, it kind of just 
kept going um, with this brand for until like um, the middle of COVID. I was buying a lot of products. I was buying supplies, um, doing my drop shipping, and I was making a decent amount of money until I finally realized maybe I buy this in bulk. So I'm not um, spending so much money per product. And I end up buying 500 of these water bottles in bulk. Um, the cost is $3 a bottle, and I was selling them for around $10 a bottle. So it was a $1,500 U.S. investment. And I decided to pull the trigger and just invest all my money in these water bottles so I can sell them over COVID and make more money on each margin of the product. These water bottles show up to my door, and I can't sell anymore. So I'm stuck with $1,500 worth of water bottles in my garage, and I'm not able to sell anymore because I've already sold to all of my market, like all to all my family and friends. Nobody wanted any more water bottles. I was stuck with all of them. So it was really difficult. And that was kind of my first business failure of saying, hey, look, here's my garage. I have tons of this product, and I have no idea what to do with it. And I kind of built myself back up from that just doing different businesses and stuff. And I ended up just donating the rest of those water bottles. But yeah, that was my first initial business story of really understanding what it was like to succeed and then fail. And then, um, yeah, you know, kind of build myself back up from that. Wow, that's an amazing story. It reminds me of some of those Shark Tank story, stories, yeah. you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. that, it, it's amazing that you did that at like a yeah, uh, 15 year old. For me, just to fail and understand what that felt like at 15 years old or 14 years old, I mean, that is so powerful, you know, and the fact that my parents did not want to help me out at all. They were like, this is your money. We're not giving you any of this. And, you know, you just end up failing. But I guess the true key for any entrepreneur is like when you fail, um, a true entrepreneur wants to build himself back up from that and learn from their failures. I know a lot of friends who have tried to help out with starting their own businesses. They hit one roadblock and they can't do it. They need someone else to tell them what to do. But for me, I guess that failure was a true testament um, to my entrepreneurship. At 15 years old, I was like, hey, even though I failed at this, I want to still build myself back up. I want to build myself back up and I want to figure this out on my own. And I was able to do that um, at such a young age to the point where I was like, maybe I just fully invest into entrepreneurship and see where that takes me. Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, yeah, I do agree with that because um, what I've realized in my uh, journey is that um, the um, like the speed uh, of moving on uh, from the terrible situation or <laughs> just something not working out, like the faster you move on, the uh, more chances you have of succeeding in the future. Uh, and uh, some people just don't move on. They just stuck in that kind of mental mind that they are fail, uh, they failed or whatever. And uh, that is just something that you have to overcome. Exactly. It's something that you have to overcome and it's something that you have to learn constantly. It's just a constant learning process. But I didn't let that just keep me down. I wanted to keep going with this. I knew this model worked, this drop shipping model worked. I made the tiny bit of money from it. And I realized maybe I could do this on a bigger scale. So we were testing different products, me and another friend of mine. We were testing products um, around 2021, 2022-ish. And we were going and we were posting these videos on TikTok. And a few of these videos completely blowed up. Like we had videos that got 14 million views. We had accounts that had hundreds of thousands of followers for these different products. And that was the first period of making five figures in a month, so over $10,000 a month. Um, doing this e-commerce stuff. And for me, that was completely mind-blowing because I went from failing in that position to, all right, let me just keep going. And then that period of you know keeping on going, even though I wasn't seeing any immediate success, I just kept going and I kept trying. And through that experience, I was able to kind of make something out of that and be successful for a short bit. Um, so we were really able to grow some of these accounts and kind of grow our e-commerce portfolio. And we had a few different products that were making us a decent amount of money per month. Um, just the amount of revenue and stuff. It was really like something I've never seen before. I always would see those gurus on social media talk about, 
oh, it's so easy to make this amount of money per month. And I was like, no, it's not. There's so much like, there, there's so much to it. And I didn't believe that they were making that amount of money. But truly, I realized that if you actually put in that work, um, it's possible. And we were doing it. But the one thing the gurus don't tell you about is the more money you make, the more problems you have to face and the easier it is to lose everything. <laughs> so when we were doing really well in our e-commerce, we would have to deal with so many issues. Like our supplier was, um, as we were ordering more and more quantity of the actual item, it's becoming way harder to work with them. Some customers would take months to deliver a product and it was really just a pain in the butt, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Um, a lot of customers, they would be very underage, like they would be 12, 11 years old ordering these products off of their mom's credit cards. So we would get an amazing amount of chargebacks on our sites. So people who are refunding these on their credit cards, and we would have to deal with not making profit that much and like spending out of our own personal expenses. So even though you would see the big $10,000 in revenue, it was really a lot of my personal expenses going and fulfilling these products because we were getting so many of these customer refunds and it was the cost to actually run the advertisements and the cost to fulfill the products. So, and taxes on top of all of that too, it was very difficult as we start to scale up, which caused us to stop with that immediately and to look towards other solutions. So I knew I was good at the marketing side of things, but I was really bad at the back end side of things. So I figured, why not just invest into what I'm good at and leave the back end stuff for someone else to do? Yeah, yeah, totally makes sense. And do you want to go a little bit more specific into the drop shipping business model? Yeah. Maybe if you can kind of just describe more specifically what you did, uh, sure. how did that work? So what we would do is we would find these products online um, on these different um, Chinese websites, Alibaba, AliExpress. Um, and look at the shipping times, trying to get shipping times in under a week to two weeks um, ish, so that our customers would be pretty satisfied with the shipping time of the product. We look at viral products that no one else was doing on TikTok. What we would do is we'd scroll through TikTok and we'd see these viral products, and then all these other companies would try and copy their products and stuff because it was so easy to copy products and you know kind of piggyback off with other people's successes. We want to do the opposite. We want to find products that had the potential to go viral. And we didn't want to go on piggyback off of someone else's success like other drop shippers. So what we would do is we would find these products. We would test TikTok accounts. We would create a TikTok account fresh. And we would make around 10 to 20 quality videos with the product. And we post on TikTok accounts. And we find that either this product is a winner and we could potentially scale this up or this product is not very good and it's not performing well in the algorithm. The issue is, if you get a product that is very successful on TikTok, um, a lot of other companies and a lot of other people will try and piggyback off your product because it's a public product. Anyone can go and post it. It's really drop shipping. So it's very easy to steal other people's product. So when I would post um, a brand new product and it would get a million views, probably 20 or 30 different people would try and make their own stores and their own versions of those product and their own videos. And maybe sometimes that would steal from my success. And that's why I really started to leave dropshipping because it was, I would say it was a very unethical business model in a lot of ways. And obviously for someone who was 16, 17 years old at the time, it's tough to tell what's ethical and what's not in business. And you kind of have to learn that yourself. We were doing it quite an ethical way. Um, however, because we were doing it in such an ethical way, we were losing so much money on the back end. Because with drop shipping, the customer pays your account. And with that money, you put in their address into a Chinese supplier that will deliver the product fast to them. And um, from their money, you would pay for the product to deliver it and you'd make the profit margin off of that sale. However, when the customer tries to refund all their money, because their 11-year-old son or daughter bought it without their permission, that's when things get into massive problems and you start to lose a lot of profit margins and a lot of just margins in general off of doing business. And so you get to a point where you're fulfilling all of this product and you, you're not really good at fulfilling. You're really good at drawing attraction and you're really good at drawing attraction to the younger audience. 
However, the younger audience is not asking for their parents' permission to buy these products. And you're the one that kind of has to suffer on the back end while all of your while all of your competitors are taking all of your ideas and making money off of it. And I realized, man, I'm really good at fostering attention and gaining attention. But on the back end of the business, I'm not good at that at all. And that was such a big realization I had that kind of rebranded myself as yeah, maybe I'm not great at e-commerce, but I'm a really good marketer. So if I'm really good at marketing and I'm not good at the back end, let me focus all of my attention into marketing and creating content rather than trying to fulfill content or fulfill the actual part of the business. Yeah, yeah, totally makes sense. And what about your business partner? Did you have just one partner or was it like a team of multiple people? I had, I had one partner and um, here's the thing like with business partners, and you might have dealt with this before, and some people in the audience might have dealt with this too. But business partners can really either be the greatest thing or just someone that kind of just steals from you month after month. I wouldn't say my business partner was stealing from me directly, but it was more of something where it was a 50 50 contract and we were supposed to put in equal amounts of work. But I was kind of caught doing all of the tasks, all of the marketing tasks. He was supposed to be my back end guy who was working on supplier and fulfillment issues and things of that nature. But I ended up doing all of that because he would ghost me from days upon days and his name was signed on the contract and there's nothing you can really do to get out of that. So he was able to make 50% of the profit from that, even though I was probably doing 90% of the work. And I wasn't great. He was supposed to be really great at the fulfillment side of the business, but he wasn't great at the fulfillment side of the business. And that was the part of the business that had the most amount of problems. And me, who really didn't have a ton of knowledge in fulfillment, I would try and go in there on massive scales of orders and try and work out these fulfillment issues one after another, even though most of my time was supposed to be spent on the marketing side of things. So if you're going into business and you have a potential business partner, you really want to vet this person, make sure that they be there, there for you like in business and there for you in personal life. Because um, when you do ask for a business partner, you have to realize that um, you're giving a percent of your business away to someone else. And you want to make sure that they're capable of actually doing these tasks at a high level. And this guy was not. And that's why that's another reason why this entire enterprise, which could have been a really, really good thing for both of us. Um, cause we were, I was very good at doing the marketing and he was supposed to be very good at fulfillment. It could have really been a great relationship and I could have still been doing this today, but since it wasn't a great relationship and since it was very difficult for me to handle the fulfillment side of things and actually have a business partner, that's why that business sort of failed. So just a key lesson for all the listeners is make sure you vet a business partner before you do any sort of business deal. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy that you lived through that experience again uh, yeah. in that early age uh, because many people like in their 30s, even 40s uh, haven't had that experience and they're still like naive and think that uh, like these problems cannot happen, but they they do and it's it, it happens quite often. Yeah, they, they happen so often and that was another failure. So those were two massive failures talked about in that video. We eventually had to shut down the entire operation because this guy was putting in zero effort. And I was like, is it worth it for me to continue? Um, is it worth all the time and energy for me just to keep moving three steps back every time I try and go one step forward? And I realized even though we were actually pretty successful on paper, it wasn't really like that on the back end. It was very messy and it was a very messy business. And I realized, do I want to be known for selling children's products online like do i want that to be my reputation as an entrepreneur or do i want to do something bigger do i want to change lives and you know really um do that side of things rather than just trying to look at the monetary aspect and saying oh i sell these products to 11 year olds and i make this amount of money per month but i have to deal with all these chargebacks and all of this back end fulfillment that's killing my brain so for me it was about realizing that and realizing that I wanted something different 
and I wanted to build back up from that failure again. So I was searching for a lot of jobs online based on my viral experience, my viral content marketing, and I found a gig with a startup called Blue Willow. I don't know if you've heard of Blue Willow before, but they're one of the bigger AI image generators, and they were one of the biggest at the time, competing with Midjourney for the top spot. But I met them when they had less than 100 members in their, or 100 users in their startup. Um, they were just starting out. Their previous marketer was a fraud, and they were kind of looking for something better. And I reached out to them, and we ended up working together on a very small budget to even see if I was capable for marketing. Um, with them because at first I was an e-commerce marketer. I had no idea how to market startups or do any of that. I was very familiar with marketing these products to 11 year olds. I wasn't familiar with marketing um, startups to people who actually wanted to use this to better their lives. So we kind of went into it. I was struggling for around three weeks, figuring out different strategies to market for them and help them blow up their startup to people who were AI enthusiasts who wanted to generate these images. So around three weeks in, I realized I was targeting the complete wrong crowd. I was targeting people who have never heard of AI before and didn't understand AI at the time. Now everyone understands AI, I hope. But at the time, nobody really understood what AI was unless they were involved in projects like Midjourney or OpenAI and different projects like that. So I kind of developed an ad strategy where we were able to extract a lot of the users from these other platforms, these other AI platforms, create lookalike audiences on different ad platforms, um, and target people who would actually be interested in using AI and give them a really good initial offer to get them involved. I pitched this to the founders and they were very interested. They gave me a really small budget and they said, go have fun, try and get us as many users as possible from this. We like the sound of this. Let's see what happens. I launched the ads overnight and I wake up to tons of text messages from all of the founders. And they're like, dude, this is working insanely well. We're getting so many users for the amount of money we spent for you. Let me give you $2,000. See what you can do with that. And I was like, okay. And so week after week, they kept increasing the budget. It turns out these guys were extremely wealthy. Um, they sold their startup. They had like a healthcare startup um, or something like that. They had a ton of money to their name and they wanted to put all that money into advertising. They kind of gatekept that information from me at first because they didn't entire, entirely trust me as a marketer, but they wanted to see someone who could actually perform. And even though I had no idea what I was doing, I was performing for them. And they kept giving me more and more money month after month to the point where I was getting invoices for like $50,000 to go in the market. They had a ton of money. They want to be the top AI image generator in the entire world. And I want to make that happen for them. So we kept getting them users. We were almost at 100,000 users. And they were getting a lot of attraction from a lot of different companies who wanted to invest in them because um, they had a really cool way of generating images that was different from a lot of other platforms. And I they were bringing in other marketers to help me out and other marketers to work with me. So instead of it just being a one person team, we had around 10 or 12 people who we were communicating with on a daily basis to try and get viral on different platforms and keep up the momentum. And I ended up leaving the team when they had a million members and there was other marketers that came in to kind of fulfill my role. And uh, back a few months ago, they were acquired by LimeWire for a pretty solid amount of money. And you could look at all the news headlines. They were acquired by LimeWire. They're the third or fourth biggest Discord server in the world where they were operating their startup. And now I think they have like three or four million users, which is super crazy. So to think that I started that from 100 users and went all the way up to that, um, it was such a powerful realization that I can actually make an impact in marketing real businesses and marketing startups and that I'm ready to fail but I'm also ready to build back up and I'm ready to um, really just make things right, which is what I'm good at. Yeah, this is, this is just incredible. Like scaling from a hundred to basically a million. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's crazy cool. Um, but you left the company at some point and yeah, then. The company. Um, it was a mutual agreement. We both thought that 
we were both um, ready to just separate. I have this experience now to my name, which I could go to other businesses and I can help other smaller businesses grow. And, um, you know, with these same strategies that I use with Blue Willow, these other smaller softwares and these other smaller so um, startups, I could use these same strategies and implement these same strategies into their business to help them get more users um, for an affordable price and build out different marketing systems for them. So that's what I've been doing for the past year or so now, even year and a half. I've been helping a lot of smaller startups and softwares um, get users through my unique marketing system. So I kind of go into these startups almost as a CMO position or partial CMO, sometimes as an agency position too, where I kind of bring in a decent team of mine. And we go and we build out these marketing systems for these smaller startups and softwares to attract their ICP. And it's been so fun for me to just watch my skill set grow as I do this, but also um, to watch these businesses grow and to watch these businesses succeed that I'm hoping right now, based on my experience with Blue Willow, it's really just one experience could change your entire life. So um, one message for me, the message that I sent to the Blue Willow founders really changed the course of my entrepreneurship journey to where now I'm focusing on the right thing, focusing on the thing that I'm good at. And for me, that was really, really imperative and super cool to figure out at 17 years old, I know exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I guess not many people can say that, but it's been such a valuable experience. That's awesome. Uh, and I'm going to put a link to your website. Do you, you, you do have a website, right? Yeah, yeah, I do have a website. Yes. I'll send yeah. you that after the call. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyone listening who might be interested in uh, marketing services, uh, feel free to go to Zachary's link and uh, yeah. maybe maybe you guys could work together uh and you also have a team right it's not just a yeah, so i have a small team that i usually implement for um so like for example like we have media buyers we have um people who analyze trends um do copy and things like that we also have social media managers so yeah we have a small team and i think that's going to be the real next part of my business because i love to travel and i love to travel to third world countries that's a weird hobby of mine I was doing it this summer. I traveled to Georgia, Azerbaijan, Moldova, Romania, a lot of different cool countries that I'm super interested in. And um, through my personal and client success, I was really able to make that trip possible over this summer. It was so eye-opening for me because I love being in these places. And I love the people in these places. And what I would like to do is build teams in these places to manage marketing. So teaching people my skill sets and building teams in these different countries and giving people opportunities while actually helping first world countries for a really affordable price. So I think that's going to be the next segment of my life is going, traveling, building out teams, teaching people things while um, providing services to first world countries and really making that effective. So that I think that might be the next course of my life because it combines kind of both of my passions into one thing. And we're providing value to all parties through it. So I think that might be eventually what I'd like to do. But yeah, right now I'm kind of working with a smaller team. But I'd like to build out bigger teams um, to help first world companies with different things. Yeah, yeah that's, that's just incredible. And uh, do, do you even have time for school? Do you even go to school? Yeah, I, I go to school and I have plenty of time. I wake up at five in the morning usually. Um, I do my personal business. Um, stuff i go to school um from around 7 a.m to 2 p.m and then i do my business stuff after school i have time to hit the gym during the day i have time during the weekends for friends and stuff but yeah a lot of my time is consumed by business but i also make sure i have personal time and school time to succeed in other areas of my life <laughs> all right and uh before we end um do you have uh any one last advice you want to share with the listener, with anyone who yeah. might be uh, younger than you or just like you or even uh, older than you, and but maybe you have something to say to them. Yeah. So I would say for younger people who are listening to this, um, don't let that, don't let people who say that, um, you know, you have to go down the college route, you have to go um, into the workplace route. Don't let that defer you from your dreams. Stick to your dreams and keep pursuing what you're doing, even if it's looking like nothing's working and it's looking like you're failing every step of the way. 
that you're so close to success at that point. So please reach out to me if you're struggling with different things. And I'd love to personally mentor you even and help you out with that. So my DMs on Instagram are always open. I'll let um, Danny put that in his bio so you can reach out to me and I will be sure to help you through your entire process. And for the older people listening, um, just because I'm young and I'm finding just a tiny amount of success doesn't mean that you're not capable of that either. I know tons of people who are 30, 40 years old who have had so much success in marketing and they completely switched their career into logistics. And now they're pro uh, professionals at logistics and managing that. So it doesn't really matter what success I'm having now. Maybe one day I'll wake up and decide to do something different. But it's that drive that you have to have inside of you where you wake up early, you get what you have to do done in your um, professional life, and you enjoy a very fruitful and happy personal life. And I think that's kind of the ultimate success, um, just being able to have both aspects of your life. And as I said in the call before, um, if you're going into any business with a business partner, always bet the business partner, make sure they're always capable of doing it and make sure you can sign fair contracts. And I think it's definitely there. There's tons of potential to starting businesses with business partners and, um, you know, making things grow super fast. Um, but just make sure you have a fair contract in place because you don't want to get burned all that. Way. Thank you. Thank you, Zachary. It's no one of the most fascinating stories that we had on this podcast. So, Thank you so much, um, Danny. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, I wish you all of the luck uh, for you, uh, all of the drive energy that you have. Uh, do not lose it. Just continue going. And I'm sure that uh, you can uh, really do what you want to do and change the world just, just like you said. Thank you, Danny. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.